Hi friends, here we go. This is Watchtower Study Article 26, which will be study the week of August the 22nd, 2022 at Jehovah's Witness meetings. The title to this article is How to How Love Helps Us to Overcome Fear. I never thought about showing love so that I'm not afraid. But wait a minute. This is Watchtower. So you have to wonder, is this article about love or is it about scaring the pants off of the indoctrinated let's take a look notice the preview fear is a normal emotion that can protect us from danger true but giving into unwholesome fear can do the opposite it can put us in harm's way how so satan will use that fear against us clearly we must work hard to control that kind of fear what will help us as this article will show when we are convinced that Jehovah is on our side and that he loves us, we can overcome any fear. Wow. Let's see if they can prove this from the Bible. Notice paragraph one. Consider the following real life situation. Nestor and his wife Maria wanted to serve where the need was greater. In order to accomplish that, however, they would need to adjust their standard of living. But they were afraid that they might not be truly happy if they had to live on less money. Wow. We're going to continue going. When Biniam became one of Jehovah's Witnesses in a country where our work is opposed, why? Why would the Jehovah's Witness work be opposed? He realized that as one of God's people, he could be persecuted. That scared him. But he was even more fearful of how his family might react when they found out about his new religion. What do you think so far? <laughs> a lot of fear, huh? Persecution? We have fear, we have persecution, we have opposition, coming up cancer. All in the first paragraph. You have to wonder, why is the Jehovah's Witness work opposed in countries? Also, why would this individual's family, why would they have a bad reaction to this person becoming a Jehovah's Witness? Makes you wonder. Back to the paragraph where it's underlined in blue, Valerie was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer and she struggled to find a surgeon who would respect her Bible-based beliefs regarding blood. Understandably, she feared that she might die. So listen, uh, when I was in school, I think I was in about seventh grade, I was going into a class called home economics where we would learn to <laughs> cook, okay? So one of my family members said to me, you're gonna have to be very careful because you're Jehovah's Witness and you might learn how to make an egg. And what if you make an egg and they, what if you crack the egg and that egg has blood in it? You're not going to be able to eat that egg. I remember that vividly. And I remembered the angst that I felt, the anxiety of what if I make an egg and what if that egg has blood in it? And then how am I going to stand up for my beliefs? This organization has such a way of instilling fear in the minds of the indoctrinated. Notice paragraph two. Have you experienced such fears? Many of us have. If we do not learn to control our fears, we'll likely make bad decisions that could even have a negative impact on our relationship with Jehovah. Wow, that is what Satan wants. Hmm. He also tries to use our fears to make us disobey Jehovah's laws. That's not true, including the command to preach the good news. Satan is wicked, relentless, and powerful, but you can protect yourself from him. How? I, I want to show you Revelation 12, 17, that they cite in support of saying that Satan tries to make us disobey Jehovah's laws, which means the rules of the organization. 
Notice there it is on the bottom, Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was angry, wroth or angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Does this sound like Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witnesses, friends? Let me show you. The woman is Israel. The remnant of her seed are Christians because they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Women do not have seeds Women have eggs. We are talking about Christians because the seed of the woman is Jesus. The woman is Israel, friends, not Jehovah's Witnesses. Notice Genesis 3.15 on the bottom. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, Israel, and between thy seed, the enemy's seeds, and her seed, Jesus. It, meaning Jesus, will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is not talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. It's talking about Jesus. You know, in the Garden of Eden, this Genesis 3.15, this curse on the serpent. When Jesus died, the enemy thought that he had succeeded in killing the seed of the woman, destroying the seed of the woman but he only bruised his heels. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you later on, I, I've shared this before in my videos, I'm gonna show you later on that Jesus destroyed the enemy with a crushing blow to the head. Listen, the only way to really kill a snake, which I'm not, okay, I, I mean, if I, if I get comments about this, honestly, my grandfather, the only way to kill a snake in the garden was he would take a shovel and he would chop off that head or he would crush that head, okay? So Jesus rendered a crushing blow to the head of the serpent when he was raised bodily from the dead. I just wanted to share that with you. This is talking about Christians. It's not talking about Satan trying to use fear to get Jehovah's Witnesses to disobey the rules of the organization, specifically by disobeying the command to preach the good news. Okay, let's keep going. Paragraph three in the box. When we are convinced that Jehovah loves us, that he is on our side, we can defeat Satan's efforts. Listen, I'm not going to read all of these verses, but you feel free to read them. I'm not trying to hide anything. I just cannot look everything up. All right, so this paragraph is leading the indoctrinated to believe that when we are convinced that Jehovah loves us, then we can defeat the devil's efforts. This is a lie. I want to show you Hebrews 2.14. Feel free to read the verses they cite. Really think about do these verses support what they just wrote in this publication? Let me show you what happened. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers, not observers, partakers of flesh and blood, he also, Jesus himself, likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The devil has been defeated. Jesus willingly gave up his life. He wasn't led to the slaughter. Well, I mean, yeah, he was, but he willingly allowed the men that he created, created because he's the creator, to kill him because he knew that the shedding of his spotless blood was what was required to bridge that gap between God and man that sin had created. Okay, now Jesus is the only way to God. Let's keep going. Paragraph four in the box. We need to be convinced that Jehovah loves us personally. Our having that conviction will help us to overcome three common fears, namely fear of not being able to provide for our family, hmm. fear of man, and fear of death. The individuals mentioned in the opening paragraph were able to overcome their fears because they were convinced of God's love. All right, paragraph five. A Christian family head takes seriously the responsibility to care materially for his family. If you are a family head, perhaps during the recent pandemic, there was a possibility that you'd lose your job. You may have worried that you would struggle to put food on the table and pay the rent or the mortgage on your home. You may also have been afraid that if you lost your job, you'd not be able to find another one. 
What's underlined? Satan has a lot of, su of success in exploiting such fears. No kidding. Satan really does have a lot of success in exploiting all of those fears. Moving along to paragraph six in the purple box, Satan tries to make us believe that Jehovah does not care about us personally and that we are on our own when it comes to providing for our families. That is not true. Satan's goal is to steal our salvation. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but let's keep going in the paragraph. As a result, we might conclude that we need to do whatever it takes to hold on to our present employment, even if it means ignoring scriptural principles. That's ridiculous. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Notice Romans 10, 9. This is the simplicity that's in Christ, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Do you really think that Satan cares about a person being afraid whether or not they can provide for their family? Scripture tells us what Satan cares about. Satan cares about stealing. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He wants to steal the salvation that's a free gift through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, friends. He, that salvation is a free gift. It's that simple. The Bible makes it very clear in Paul's epistles the devil hates that. He wants you to be wound up and bound up and working and overworked and confused. That's what religion is all about. Religion is about rules and working, doing this, kneeling, standing, going out in service. That's what Satan wants you to be so busy that you can't see the simplicity that is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Let's go back to the paragraph. Paragraph 7 in the brown box. As Christians, we are members of God's household. We can be sure that as family head, look at that, capital H, Jehovah will respect the principle he had recorded at 1 Timothy 5, 8. All right, you can look up 1 Timothy 5, 8, friends, if you want, but let's move to Ephesians 5, 23. The husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. 1 Corinthians eleven three. Christ is the head of every man. The man is the head of the woman, and God is the head of Christ. Colossians 2.10. And in him you have been made complete. He is the head over all rule and authority. Christ is the head. Jehovah of Watchtower is not the head, friends. Paragraph eight in the orange box. When we are convinced that Jehovah loves us and that he loves our family, we have no trouble believing that he, we will have the things we need. Jehovah wants to provide for us and what a loving, generous provider he is with a capital P. Hmm. Notice the orange box. Even if at times we have just enough to get by, we do well to focus on the fact that we are getting by. Jehovah has not failed to provide for us. I just want to jump back to 1 Corinthians 8, 6 there on the left. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we exist through him. Isn't that interesting? Paragraph 9 in the blue box. Nestor and Maria had enjoyed a comfortable lifestyle in Colombia. We thought about simplifying our life and expanding our ministry, they said, but we were afraid that we wouldn't be happy living on less money. So they reflect on the ways Jehovah provided for them. On the right, what's underlined, they quit their well-paying jobs, they sold their home, moved to a part of the country where there was a greater need for kingdom preachers. And they're happy. Paragraph 10, fear of man. Humans have a bad record of harming one another. For example, people abuse their authority, criminals commit violent acts, bullies at school insult and threaten their classmates, and some people 
even treat their family members brutally. No wonder humans fear other humans. Let's keep going, paragraph 11. Satan uses fear of man to try to force us to make compromises and to stop us from preaching. Under the influence of Satan, governments have banned our work and persecuted us. Why? Why have governments banned their work? They cite Luke 21 and Revelation 2.10. You can read them, friends. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in Luke 21 about the end of days, not to Jehovah's Witnesses. There is Revelation 2.10 down there. I just want you to notice Revelation 2 verse 1 at the bottom in pink that it was written to the church at Ephesus. These were Christians. The Ephesians were told this, not Jehovah's Witnesses. Completely different. People who believe these lies may mock us or even attack us physically. Are we surprised at Satan's tactics? Not at all. He was already using them in the first century. Friends, Acts chapter 5 is all about Christians serving Christ, not Jehovah's Witnesses serving the God of an organization. They cite verses 27, 28, and 40, which are in red there. Notice they leave out most of what Peter had said, which started in verse 29. Peter in verse 30, what's underlined said, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hung on a tree. We're talking about Jesus being resurrected, okay? Notice verse 41 at the bottom. What's underlined? And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counting wor counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Whose name? Verse 20, 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They weren't announcing Jehovah's kingdom, the God of Watchtower. These people were preaching Jesus who was raised from the dead, conquering death, defeating the devil, paying the price for mankind's sin. That's what they were talking about, the gospel. Let's start reading paragraph 12. Fear of opposition from governments is not the only weapon Satan uses. For some, notice this, fear of how family members will react to the truth is greater than any physical abuse. Here they go. This is the us against them. Un unbelieving family members are bad. They love their relatives very much and want them to come to know and love Jehovah. It pains them to hear their relatives speak disrespectfully of the true God and of his worshipers. Can you believe this? In some cases, however, relatives who were initially opposed later came into the truth. But suppose our family members cut all ties with us because of our new beliefs. Wait a minute. <laughs> the family me Is it the family members cutting all ties with Jehovah's Witnesses because of their new beliefs? Or is it the Jehovah's Witness cutting all ties with the family members. If I didn't see this so clearly, I would just be so confused. Notice the caption in the picture. Even if family members oppose us, we can be confident of Jehovah's love. And then below that, page 17, this is the picture explained. Here we go. The parents of a young brother are opposed to his worship, but he is confident of God's support. Sad, very sad. Paragraph 13 talks about Jehovah's love, makes us feel secure in the face of opposition. Paragraph 14 goes back to the story of Biniam. He, be, he or she, this person, became one of Jehovah's Witnesses despite knowing that he could face vicious persecution. What's underlined, he said, the persecution was beyond imagination. But what I feared even more than government persecution was opposition from my family. Awful. Why was his family opposing him? He says, I was afraid that my decision to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses would disappoint my unbelieving father and that my family would think that I was a failure. Wow. He says, I reflected on how Jehovah had helped others to endure economic hardship, prejudice, and mob violence. I knew that if 
I stuck with Jehovah. He would bless me. What does that even mean? When I was arrested multiple times and even tortured. Jehovah helped him to be faithful. At the bottom, um, Jehovah became a real father to Binium and his people proved to be a real family to him. Us against them. The family members who may be thinking critically, who may be able to recognize the love bombing, who may be able to recognize how this individual is slowly distancing himself from everything that he knew and loved in his old life. They may be trying to talk sense into them, maybe doing it the right way or the wrong way. Regardless, they're the ones with their eyes opened and they are such a threat. This paragraph emphasizes that if people, if Jehovah's Witnesses stick with Jehovah, that they will be blessed. What does that mean? That means not doubting the organization. It means obeying the governing body, even if it doesn't seem practical from a human standpoint. That's the only way that the God of Watchtower will bless the indoctrinated. But does he ever bless? I don't believe he's capable of blessing. Now they bring in death, paragraph 15. Death, death, death. Paragraph 16 in the box, Satan knows that we cherish our life. He claims, however, that we would sacrifice everything we have even our friendship with Jehovah just to preserve our present life. Look, they, they cite Job 2, 4, and 5, but I want to show you verse 6, okay? And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. Do you understand that Satan needs permission from the Lord to carry out his wily ways? Satan would have killed Job in an instant, but he wasn't allowed to. The devil is a defeated foe. He was a created being and he's been defeated. So you know what? Watchtower can quote and cite Job and how the enemy attacked him, but the enemy could, could only go so far. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's the truth from scripture. Why focus so much attention on the devil? The paragraph goes on how wrong Satan is. Still, he is the one having the means to cause death. Satan tries to exploit our natural fear of death in order to make us abandon Jehovah. In some cases, Satan's agents, wow, Threaten to kill Jehovah's worshipers if they don't renounce their faith. Huh. In other cases, Satan may take advantage of a life-threatening medical situation. All right, then moving along, medical doctors or unbelieving family members may pressure us to accept a blood transfusion. Satan's been defeated. Believers in Hebrews 2.15 have been delivered from fear of death and bondage. Notice verse 16, Jesus, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Don't fear the devil. Don't worry about Satan. The demons tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was not Michael, the archangel friend. He didn't take on the nature of angels. He took on the nature. He took on him the seed of Abraham. He became a man. And he paid the price for us. He defeated the devil. So much happened through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why he is the truth. He doesn't point the way to the truth. He is the truth. All right, 17. Although we do not want to die, 
We know that Jehovah will not stop loving us if our life should end. Romans 8, 37 through 39. We're conquerors, friends. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul goes on and persuaded that neither life Death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in huh, Christ Jesus, our Lord. All right, let's keep going after the paragraph said to read Romans chapter 8. When Jehovah's friends die, he keeps them in his memory as if they were still alive. He longs to bring them back to life. Jehovah has paid a high price. Jesus paid the price, friends, so that we might, they put in quotes, might have everlasting life. John 3, 16, read it. If they believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's no might in that. If you believe, you have everlasting life. Paragraph 18 goes into more cancer, death, fear, survival. This person, Valerie, says, I was scared. But in view of God's command, there was no way I would accept a blood transfusion. Throughout my life, Jehovah has shown me so much love. How? How has Jehovah of Watchtower shown her love? I want to know. Oh, she wanted to make Jehovah proud and not let Satan win. That made Jehovah proud of her. Really? Where's the verse saying that the God of Watchtower, or even God for that matter, is proud by not letting Satan win? Satan has been defeated. He lost. Colossians 2.15 says that um, Jesus spoiled principalities and power, making a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That was when he was raised from the dead. Notice Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians 2 tells us that Jesus triumphed over the devil when he was raised from the dead. Doesn't that make you smile? If you read only that and not these articles which talk about fear and death, anxiety and fear just goes away. Paragraph 19, overcoming our fears in the red box. Very soon, Jehovah will direct Jesus and his co-rulers, fake news, to break up the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. After that, God's people serving him on earth will fear nothing and have no cause for terror. There's 1 John 3, 8. Tell me where it says Jesus and his co-rulers will break up the works of the devil. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Where's the co-rulers? You mean these guys? These guys are going to break up the works of the devil? That just makes me laugh. Fear, 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 fear death, 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 Satan, Satan, Satan. That's what I read in this article. It's no wonder that Jehovah's Witnesses have anxiety and fear and depression. It's very, very sad. That's by design. Keep them enslaved. We know that false prophets in Deuteronomy chapter 18, false prophets wield their authority by fear. God says, don't fear them. If just one prophecy they said does not come true, don't fear them. And we know that this organization has had false prophecies from its beginning. Anyway, friends, that's it. Get on the winning side. Choose to serve Jesus Christ today. It's a matter of a simple prayer between you and him. Cry out to him and he'll save you. Thanks for watching, friends. I hope you have a great day.